Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So you guys asked for more CNC projects and more open hardware flight controls and ECs and all that kind of stuff. So today we're gonna to be CNCing a project. It's from a subscriber of mine. His name is Bart, really nice guy. He sent over a frame that he wanted, uh, which is the King Kong, I think 80X. It's a really tiny one that was taking brushed um, motors, but he really loved the way it flew. So he designed one that takes uh, those, you know, those new micro brushless motors. So he sent that over and I've been preparing everything all morning and we're about to start cutting it. However, in this video, I'm gonna go slightly a bit into more detail so you can get an idea of what it takes to cut carbon fiber and just to get an idea and hopefully it'll kind of give you like a starting point if you ever decide to buy yourself a little tiny CNC machine. There's a couple online I've seen a couple reviews for that are pretty good. I'll have them linked down below. I'll also have this one linked down below. This one might be um, out of most people's price range and, um, but you could still do the same exact thing as long as you get the spindle, the right tools, and the right cutting profiles, you should be fine in that perspective. So first, I'm gonna show you the cutting profile. We're gonna take a look at the model and what I've decided to do, you do for cut the cutting profile. Now, for the end bits, we're gonna be using a Chinese branded one. The last time I used some really expensive uh, German ones. These are a drill pro, they cut the drill pro, I think that's what they're called. I'll have them linked down below. It comes in a small set like this. And it has just about every single size. I think it's like 0.5 all the way up to three millimeters. So for this cut, we're using a uh, 1.5 1 millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter because the smallest hole is uh, 1.5 millimeter. And I'll explain that once we go into the model section. So I'll have these linked down below if you wanna go ahead and check those out. That's great, really supports the channel. And, and if you can support me on Patreon, it'll enable me to do a lot more things like this. I also wanna get into uh, carbon fiber molding so we can do all kinds of you know molds. For example, uh, battery covers for electric skateboards. I really wanna make a bigger one because I have a really nice idea for a couple of them, uh, but we'll get into that later on. So right now, let's go to the PC and I'll show you what I did and then we'll start cutting. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and set up the profiles here and I'm gonna quickly gonna go over them because this is gonna be very useful for someone out there who is planning on cutting C or, or CNC in carbon fiber. Now again, this I'm still learning the best rates, so these aren't the best rates, but it's a good starting point for you. So let's get started here. Now, what I wanna do first, obviously, is always you wanna drill the holes before you cut out the whole thing. I learned that the hard way when I first started. Now, the smallest hole is 1.5 millimeters. So what I've decided to do is use a 1.5 millimeter end mill to start off with, and I'm just gonna do a straight hole through those. So if we take a closer look here, uh, those are all 1.5 millimeter holes, except this here, I think this one was like two millimeters. Uh, but we'll, we'll, I'll show you what I did here also. So we go in just straight cut through like just we're drilling and then the next step with the same end mill which is a 1.5 millimeter we'll go cut out the 2.5 millimeter I mean the 2 millimeter plus holes. So as you can tell we've already pre-drilled these two earlier. I just want to see how well those cuts are going to be. So we're going to open up this with the 1.5 millimeter. We're going to open up this. It's going to do the boring uh, where it turns and I've set it up to 100 to 100. So 100 millimeters per minute, uh, the plunge rate, which is the rate that it goes down and 100 millimeters per minute is the feed rate as it moves sideways through the material. So that is the next one. And then after that, we get a manual force tool change, uh, which you can, you know, it was really difficult to find it. So you put manual, uh, manual NC and then find uh, in the drop down box for force tool change. This will stop the cut and bring the uh, end mill towards you. So you can go ahead and replace it. And then you just click start twice again on the CNC software. And then it begins. Now on the force tool change, we're gonna change it to, I think uh, 2.5 millimeter end mill. We're gonna cut out all the inner parts here. And the reason why I ended up choosing 2.5 millimeter end mill is because this area here is going to be kind of difficult it's pushing it because that's a you know it used to be like a three millimeter hole here so a whole three millimeter we might break this off so I decided to go with 2.5 millimeters and I'll show you why and also some of these holes too they'll just come out a little bit cleaner um, so yeah we're gonna do a 2.5 millimeter I'm gonna cut out all the holes first and then the last step is where I go to the uh, body now the body is really important it's really important to know where it's, if you're not gonna be using tabs. Tabs are like little things that keep holding it to the carbon fiber so it doesn't bend or it doesn't move once you know. Uh, you basically, for example, we're gonna have half of this completely cut off and then the other half still just barely hanging with the thread. Now the software wanted to start from here, which is a really bad idea. Just thinking about how it's going to be cut, I found out that this would be the best starting point. And let me explain why. So we're gonna go through our first pass here 
And then once we start on the second pass, that's it. From here on, on the second pass, this is all being cut out. So this part here is going to be very sensitive and it would be moving before it starts, you know, flopping around after we basically cut half of it off uh, out of the stock here. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be, it's going to, I'm going to call, I'm really concentrating on this part. So this part is going to be stable when it's being completely cut off. And then if you imagine it now to here, there's nothing holding it to up here. There will be nothing holding it except to this part from here to here. And that seems to be a pretty rigid, nice place. This really long part right here. So I will be able to cut this out without much play. Come back in. And once it gets to here, it, the whole thing should be cut on the second pass. Uh, so I decided to go 1.25 millimeters every pass with a 2.5 millimeter uh, end mill. And I'm using these really uh, pretty cheap ones I found on Banggood. It's a kit that comes from, I think, 1 millimeter or 0.75 millimeter to 3 millimeter. I'll have it linked down below. I really want to try it. So we're going to try it on this one. It's like titanium. And we're going to have to cut two of these frames. So I think the profile looks good. I don't know how well, I don't know how well it's going to cut, but we're going to figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and start loading everything up and uh, we'll take it from there guys all right guys so the first drilling profile is complete with the 1.5 millimeter end mill we're not gonna be able to see its result until it finishes the second cutting profile which is to cut around the whole thing make sure if you zero in the x and the y you're screwed because the x and y already have the exact coordinates but now we just need to uh, zero out the Z, which is calibrate the Z axis once we change the end mill. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and replace the uh, end mill. We're gonna cut two frames, and at the same time, this is a review for the end bits. So let me go ahead and set up the second uh, end mill, which is a 2.5 millimeter, and hope for the best. All right, guys, so the first one is complete, and I think we need to increase the speed slightly on these uh, end mills here. It seems to be just a tad bit rough, and uh, we'll take a closer look at it just in a bit once I finish cutting the second one. The second one, I've increased the speed to around anywhere between 11,000 to 11,500 RPM. So we'll see if that makes a difference, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. All right guys, so here's the results and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, a couple things that I've figured out with these end bits here is that I think we either need to go slower or even give it more RPM here. So this is how the kit comes with. Uh, I broke this one while doing it tool change. It's something very common that'll possibly happen to you. Uh, this one's still on the machine and this is the one I've also used. Now, they didn't go dull, so they're still pretty good. I didn't use that much anyways. They shouldn't go dull. But let's start with this one. This one was running uh, 10,000 RPM and 300 millimeter feed rate and the plunge rate was around 100 millimeters per minute. Uh, this came out pretty good and as you can tell this white stuff it, it was a brand new carbon fiber sheet and immediately got this white stuff here. I don't know if it's from the water or it's from chips hitting it and thus you know scratching it like that. I still can't figure it out but I think it has to do with the resin and maybe some uh, air bubbles in it. I have no idea. So taking a look at the first one's top side it's looking pretty good. Um, and if we take a look at the back side here, we see that it's kind of rough and when we feel it, it also feels somewhat rough. Not as smooth as the one we've done with those really expensive end mills. So you got, we have to tune for these types of end mills. Here actually it was pretty nice. So it could be due to the vibrations. So this, this side here was cut out first out of everything. So it was completely cut out. So there wasn't any chance of vibrations because you know, half of it will be cut and then, you know, just basically barely floating from whatever is connected. So here, what was completely first cut, it's pretty smooth here. There should have been some vibrations. It's somewhat smooth. It's not that bad. Just, um, what you can do is what I usually do. I just bought a really cheap file kit like this. And then I just file them down a little, just very easily. You don't have to file for long, just, you know, a couple passes and it's all good here. This is the entry point. As you can tell, that's what was left from the entry point right there. Cause this is where we set it up. So this sensitive part here, uh, when it gets cut out, it doesn't start flopping. So we don't have a greater chance of possibly breaking one of these out. Uh, overall, I'm really satisfied actually with how this cut came out to be. 
Um, it just needs uh, a little bit more tuning to get it perfect. But even then, it's still something usable. I mean, it's nothing to be like ashamed of if you're going to show somebody, oh, look what I've did. However, this one is a little bit different. It doesn't actually, it does feel somewhat smoother, but it just doesn't look smoother. Maybe I just have to clean it out. I didn't clean this one as well as that one. So maybe that has to do with it. Anyways, this is the top side right here. Um, and this was really rough right here because this was the last piece that got cut before it fell into the water. So there could have been a lot of vibrations and that would explain it. Here, this is the first part. It feels pretty smooth. It actually it looks pretty good as well. Hopefully you guys could pick that up. However, what I did also notice is there's a lot of stranding. So it was pulling strands. And uh, I think the reason for that is, is we need to decrease our um, feed rate or we might have to increase our RPM because I've never cut with a 2.5 millimeter. Maybe I was cutting too aggressively, dropping down 1.25 millimeters at a pass. And I think I should have possibly done this in three passes. And uh, but other than that, it still did very well. There is no I didn't have any binding issues or any skipping issues like I did previously. Uh, because of the GoPro, so I made sure I mounted that correctly. Now, if we take a look at the holes, not all of them came out perfect, and that's something pretty normal here, especially when you're cutting while it's floating in the air. As you can tell, there's still some fibers left, and also what I do here uh, when that happens is I bring in a file, like a little round one. Actually, this isn't it. I don't know where I put it, but I, a round one, and I just do this, and then it files it out, and then it makes it good. As you can tell right there, I don't don't pull this out. So that's one thing. So there we go. There we go. Just clean them out a little bit and it'll come out really nice. So obviously this isn't for production. It's just, you know, personal projects. And um, yeah, that's perfect. As you can tell, uh, these right here, it is somewhat you can see the strands like coming out like really like it's pulling the strands out instead of cutting them. And again, I think I was cutting too aggressively. And I should have either dropped my feed rate, which is the thing that moves, the speed that it moves from 300, maybe down to 150 millimeters per minute, or possibly increased my cutting rate to, or my cutting RPM on the machine to up to maybe 15,000 RPM instead of uh, 12,500. But um, yeah, it just takes practice. And it also, you know, a huge factor depends on the, uh, depends on the carbon fiber also. So this isn't the most expensive carbon fiber. This is probably like, you know, one of the best budget possibly carbon fiber. I don't know because it's the only one I've ever used just so far. I can't afford anything else. And um, so, so far, I mean, I think it's really usable. These will be easily cleaned. However, I don't want to file them here. The reason for that is the carbon fiber dust is very dangerous. So what I would do is I'd get like a plastic bucket and I put water and I just dip both of them in the water and then I just start filing and then just make sure I clean it out like that. That's what I usually do when I file these down to make them really nice. For example, we'll have to file that down. And it doesn't take much to file these, just, just a couple passes, you're good to go. And um, so overall, I think it was a success. It was nothing too horrendous. These are the first two cuts and they just came out perfect. And the tolerance is just absolutely phenomenal on this machine. It's crazy. I mean, I never had to calibrate it. It just comes pre-calibrated. That's what's really nice about really expensive machines. So, uh, but the only thing that takes a really long time is aligning the Y axis because it's so long because the screw could bend and it could bind. But after you get that, I've never had to touch it again. That's it. I just start cutting, just place whatever I want and start cutting. And obviously you guys can see it for yourself. It's an absolute perfect cut. All the holes are perfect. Now there's also something that I've learned a while back. If your holes are not circle and they're oval like this, um, I looked everywhere online and I could never figure out why it was doing that when I first got it. And it turns out that the whole Z axis would be very, um, it's just not rigid, it's loose. And it would create ovals instead of circles. And I could have, I just never figured it out until one day I think I bumped into it and I saw it move and I was like, oh, well, that's it and that's it. After that, everything's been perfect. So yeah, overall it was a success. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. What do you wanna see more of? Do you want me to go more in depth, make depth, in-depth videos? So far, these seem to work okay. I mean, I still need some tuning on them, but we will try to perfect these, I think. I think that will be really fun. And also, any of you who have any projects we want to see cut and possibly even sent to you, uh, let me know down in the comment section. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.